before I was king, uh, I had not had any knowledge that uh, I would be one day become a king of a nation. Well, what was uh, in my mind was uh, I've never made a, a speech uh, in front of a, a big gathering. Uh, you know, so that was the big thing that I am going to make a speech. I just hope I will speak bravely. Uh, of course, there were a lot of bubbles in my stomach uh, uh, about all this. Uh, uh, of course, you know, this is something completely different. I was no longer in school. Now I was coming, I was coming back to become a king. Although my experience is short and I'm new to this task, I have in my predecessors an example I can follow with certainty and confidence. I will work to strengthen the bonds of friendship that already exist between this kingdom and the international community. God bless you all. to improve many, many things. Here in the country, there are many problems, uh, economical, social, uh, political. Uh, there are many, many challenges. Uh, we have to work together as a nation and to confront them. Uh, we can only succeed if we are all of us together. But if that one pulls that direction and that one pulls that direction, the problems will overcome us uh, instead of us overcoming the problem.
We begin in the tiny southern African kingdom of Swaziland. Here, the king is the head of the land. Some of the problems he faces today began long before his time. His father banned the country's first constitution and political parties in 1973. The kingdom has since been ruled by decree, and it's had a parliament with no real power. The demand for reform grew in the 80s, and by the time King Mswati III ascended the throne, it had reached what some call a boiling point. Dissent continues to grow. Political parties remain banned, and they've not been invited to recent dialogues. King Mswati recently met to discuss a draft constitution as a way out of the crisis. Now, Swazis insist that they are proud to be a kingdom, so the task at hand is to find a way to make the monarchy work while the rights of the people are respected. King Mswati III has said he likes to think of himself as someone who's trying to reach that balance. He rejects criticism that he rules with an iron fist. When my father passed away, and uh, that was the time when uh, I was informed that uh, I will uh, now be the king. First, I was very young, I was about 12 and a half years old. My father, in his time, the country uh, was not under entirely his, his control with, with the British. We then regained our independence in 1968. Yeah. King Sabuza is the benevolent but absolute monarch of Swaziland. In much of Africa, traditional life has become an embarrassment. Your social status is based on how well you can ape a European. In Swaziland, the traditions are sanctified. There has been so much turmoil in Africa over the past 25 years or so. Well, how come? How do you account for it? <laughs> I think that's due to the contact with, uh, with the white man. He has brought his own custom and his own environment with the Zalit. We are beginning to lose ours, what is good for Africa. I want to keep, but what's bad for Africa, we won't keep. Of course, you know, he also preached people to accept uh, technology because uh, we live in a different world. But at the same time, you say, while technology is coming, you must maintain your identity, uh, which is our culture. They call me Patch Lady, yo. I be the first lady, yo. When I be on my bus, where I'm a slim shady, yo. Walk up a fly, mini scare. Make niggas wanna flirt. Can't touch me, mother skunk, yeah. Full of dirt. If you are part of Gucci, yeah, you can lick this coochie, flip my mini G, but you get cozy with my mini dress. Strip it and impress. Then drive your mini bends for the mini princess. I wanna be out of jaws, spit rhymes and smoke, y'all. You're wine lawyer, just a little royal, so this is the nerves of the moon. Trying to holler back in my dog, can it's kaboom? The bounce the cat walk. Hate the girl talk, I be the black, kill my kill on my. The rhyme slayer, I burn you my desire, spit fire like Maya. I rock their jewels, got my own rules, no fools. Rocking Minolos, they're forcing no schools. Picture this, he rocking K-Swiss, he wants his oral kiss. Beg me, say please, give me what I miss. Triple X, pleasure, popping me, Kessa and Chris. Girl, I'm telling you this, then the... <laughs> MTV Cribs wouldn't tour any other Cribs if they saw this. I'm joking, I'm joking. Cribs would not tour any other Cribs if they saw this. Most important visitors. Well, not really, but just one of the rooms, because the other one is the one we've just been in. Oh, did we go there? No, we didn't, did we? Yes, the big five. I was younger than her when I got married. <laughs> I was so, um, two years younger than her. Were you 15? I was 16. Oh, so you're, you're turning 18 day after tomorrow. My daughter's just going to start university. I just want her to, to be industrious, to be independent, and to be able to do what she wants to do. She must achieve her dreams. That's a portrait of my Hello. grandfather up there, King Sabuza II, the legend. Oh, you saw that one of I'm my talking. dad. <coughs> Yeah. Oh.
These are the shops where our people live. Yeah, look at here, my friend. This is where we live. This is somebody's house. Just come back to the palace that the king lives. And and I think I think from this we can understand, we can have a clear understanding of what's going on here in our country. Is there any kind of peace or any kind of maybe good living or uh, like they used to say? This is our kitchen where we cook. We starve food, our food. We starve here. You can come. This is the, the, the intestines that we are selling. They come from the dump site, you know. These people, they go there and take these intestines and come and sell it here. This is not a joke. This, this is, is really, really life. This, this is what this is, is happening. What happened. You can see this is some feet and some heads. This is what they are going to have for lunch. What is the king is eating pizzas? The cops came here. And then they ta they've taken the liquor for these poor people. How can you find somebody who's poor? This is my living. Now the cops have come here, they emptied all my beer. Now I don't know what to eat today. Look at my brothers who are suffering. These people have removed. I can show you a pole which is coming right through to the road. To, to this house, you know, it's just behind the house, you know, which I'm saying they'll be demolishing. But this, this, this homestead has been here for almost 50 years. Now we are ended up being employed by the construction to demolish our own homes. Yes. Yeah, that is what is happening. If you can come in the morning and find us there, yeah, waiting to be employed. We can demolish our own homes. And that is very, very sad. We don't know whether our king loves us or our king thinks that we are criminals, enemies, you know. There's nothing we can do. Police will shoot us. If we try to explain everything, you know, if we can, if everyone can be aware of what is happening in Swaziland, you know, everything will just be okay. They don't but want they, to. They hiding, eh? They hiding. We, we they don't want to show you what we you hold the, uh, how we live. Rally. Just take all this location here, yeah, and now we're taking you to where they drink, where they take water to eat and drink, eh? In Swaziland. What we drink, Chablale? It's what the community drinks here. Just, just look at this. We expect you to drink the here because there's no taps here. You can't survive. You have to you will die. This is where we have our meals on like special occasions because normally I just get a plate in my room get them to take it there. It's just not right, you know, to sit with a king on the same table. You know, not that it's not right. I mean, we do sit with him, especially when we're overseas, but like in the house, there's just, there's just no need, you know? We give him as much respect as any other Swazi citizen. But he's cool, you know, he's friendly. <laughs> thing ever you never sleep you always have to wake up and see people you know you have to take 
the most criticism in the whole country, you know, because people think that, oh, you have absolute powers, so you're to blame for everything at the end of the day, because if you didn't really like it, you would change it. I never want to leave Swaziland. I am such a patriot. My brother and I, and Danny, we just want to come back to Swaziland and just make it happen here, you know, business-wise, politically, you know, in all kinds of ways, right? And it's not because we are important or we have money or something, but just because, because of our attitudes, because of the way our mom has groomed us to be, you know, we know what we want to do for the country. People are always saying that children are our future, right? Which means that we are the ones that have to change the country and improve it, right? And if we aren't sent to good schools and get the knowledge that people from overseas have and from, you know, that international people have, if we don't get that kind of knowledge, how are we going to come and help Swaziland? Better if we were all just stuck up in our own lives and not caring about the people, you know, but we do care about the people. It's not as if we're just watching and laughing because you can't do that if you're human. I have a kid which is going to university, very interesting. Of course, very proud that, you know, uh, there should be something like this. Uh, it shows that uh, the kid has been very good. Uh, other kids don't make it sometimes. this as well, you know? Just shows like how much we still need to... I mean, it's impossible. Or well, it seems impossible to. And in fact, it, it wouldn't even be good to reach this level because it's good to have different places. Otherwise, why would anybody travel, you know, to see the same thing everywhere? But it's really pretty and yeah. You guys are doing good for yourselves. It's quite nice. It's the first time I've been without security, so I'm not always just worrying about people bumping me or anything like that. It's just, it's just free. It's great. <laughs> it's a bit weird, you know, but liking it. Nice weird. <laughs> Come back, sir. Don't care, give me a good job, no. 
With more than a quarter of this country's population relying on food handouts just to survive, many are asking why their king seems oblivious to their needs by living in such luxury. King Matswati's lavish lifestyle in one of the world's poorest countries has attracted criticism over the past few years. In the past few months, he spent more than £600,000 on a fleet of luxury cars. All this when 65% of his citizens live on less than 50 pence a day. Whenever you travel as a king, all the things that uh, you can see, perhaps uh, they will know the king is coming, so everything must look uh, nice and so on. But knowing in general, when you speak to the people, you can feel that uh, the people are living under a poverty line, which uh, in many, many cases we feel we have to do something. And it's always very sad when you see a lot of them speak uh, about their lives, uh, how difficult it is, uh, how difficult they are coping, looking after their families and so on. Uh, and then you see sometimes that uh, you wish to help them, but uh, funds are always uh, not enough. Swaziland's cabinet has ordered a private jet for him to fly around in while his people suffer poverty and AIDS on a scale that is almost unimaginable even in this continent. Do you want the jet? Uh, we should find out from the government if I need a jet. But well, you're the king. <laughs> you're the king. You decide. You appoint the prime minister. You appoint the cabinet. They do what you tell them to do. Do you want the jet? Uh, I know I don't always say this is what I want. Uh, they come to me. Uh, they give me advice. And uh, from their advice, I am able to act. A $45 million Global Express bombardier. Now, that colossal sum means that every single person in this country will pay $50 so their monarch can fly around the world. spoke to my brother and I was telling him that you know what I'm really gonna miss you guys the times when we did this and <laughs> the times when you guys came to my room and we would watch movies and, and stay up until five in the morning I miss my two little sisters okay when I left I was missing them and then afterwards started missing my mom like a lot a lot like in a way I would never imagine because most of the time we just don't get along that well. I mean, we get along, but she always thinks I'm trying to fight with her, you know, and that my brother is always in the right, and that's where we go wrong. I really did not expect to be the only wife. I, what I knew was that definitely the monarchy is a polygamous institution. That is something that I accepted at the onset that I know this is how it's going to be. It is still weird, it is. They don't really give you a set of rules. They expect you to dutifully attend all functions that His Majesty is invited to. You need to go out only when you're expected to go out or when it is absolutely necessary. Um, be well behaved, whatever standards they don't really set the standards of good behavior, but when you do go astray, they quickly let you know. Actually, it isn't even long ago, there was a, a huge article, the rebel queen, whatever, you know. 
that, that is what they have chosen to label me. It isn't necessarily the truth. I don't believe I'm a rebel. In fact, I really adhere to a lot of the rules set for me. It is just that sometimes you can't please everyone. There comes a point where you have to please yourself. I love it. It's just epic. The rebel queen. That's funny because people at school called me the rebel princess. I see similarities in us. We both just want what we want and we'll go for it against all odds. And if that's what being a rebel means, then I fully support it and I fully encourage them to continue calling her a rebel queen. The people of this country, they still want to retain the, 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 the monarchy type of system, you see. At the same time, they want democracy. So now, you have culture and democracy, two different things. That is where the king is, is clinging. You see, he, 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 when he sees the numbers attending the cultural, non-political events, to him, the, uh, uh, to him, those people have forgotten that they drink here. The Swazi politics have been clouded with traditions. They have been telling the world that the, here in Swaziland we've got a home-brewed democracy, which does not need the influences made of other democracies, which means then it's, it's defined according to the Swazi context, as they, as they say it, which means then, according to our own understanding, democracy is a word which is universal, which is having one interpretation, the governments of the people by the people. Nations are like babies, they don't just stand up and walk. But now that it is now clear to everybody, we can't take it this any long. By tomorrow, we can mobilize the thousands of people and get to the streets, you see. We have that power, we have that capacity to do that. We are not the only ones who are angry oh, here. There, there, are, there are a lot of angry comrades outside. You see, recently the government spokesman was bombed and the national court was bombed. So who knows what is going to fall? Some of, uh, some of these comrades here are under surveillance already. Some of them have been questioned on the latest bombings. Now, right now, do they have the will to kill, the will to liberate them, the, themselves? Are they convinced that the only way to do it is through these uh, violent actions? It's not their likings, but it, 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 it is the only available. Uh, we cannot go to South Africa and ask, ask for guns. We cannot go to America and ask for guns, but we can creep at night no, with our yes. knives and kill them. So oh, that yes. is in, in Baghdad, you see people uh, beheaded. A knife is about 20 rand, then we can do it. It's only time and proper organizing. I keep in touch with the people, and sometimes I would also call the people to come. You know, we have a big gathering uh, where we discuss issues, uh, politically, economical, social, uh, health issues, and all other issues which are there. Uh, which needs to be discussed. Uh, so w w with that, because the nation feel that, uh, you know, whatever decision I'm making, I make a decision that uh, they are part of it. So uh, to them, it, it is important that uh, they can see that we, we relate to each other very well. The way that the, the, the country is run, we are totally against it. We want a multi-party democracy. We ask for the constitution, but it, is now, it, it, it was now made without us. We don't want this constitution because it is not people's driven. We were not involved. It is stated in the constitution that the king and the queen mother are above the constitution. So the this is what we are against. If it is a, it, it's the law of the country, it must be lo the law for everybody. <laughs>
We pay very high taxes in this country, but we, we, we get nothing back. It goes to the king. The members of parliament are just rubber stamps. There's nothing they can do for the country. It's, a, it's just a sheer waste of money. They are there getting large sums of money, and there's nothing they can talk because the, ting, the king is the absolute monarch. He decides, he, he does everything for this country. Now we say he should be a constitutional monarch. When he, he was crowned in 1986, he, he found that there was uh, 46 billion in the bank, in uh, the Swiss bank. In the account of his father, in a personal name, not in an official name, which, uh, which was not King Soboza, you see, but uh, his real name, I'm going to tell him more so personal. And then until he was 21, uh, when he had to be signature to that and uh, took over as an heir to not only to the throne, but to this inheritance, you know, which was... Uh, and then he says that account, I understand it's been moved from um, from Swiss Bank to Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was uh, when it returned only about 60 something billion. And it's not uh, in the account of uh, King Swati the third, but in his personal Marcos Adibe, you see. So why is it like that? So that when just in case uh, we reach the goal, the goal, when democracy is achieved, you cannot be able to retrieve that money, that the money that belongs to the people, because it, it is registered under a personal account. That's one other main factor that uh, delays the struggle. I'm ready for anything. Amen. I'm but you're not going to kill the truth. Amen. I think there'll be war. People will, people will start fighting back. Possibly the very army might attack the king. That is also possible. The day he fails to give them the money, he will, his own bodyguards, the very people who are looking after him, will turn against him. Oh, see, 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 Moba says, Tim, we both ban banya and a woody, a batau silegela, woody gemacha, a Nami Gesego situenti, and get a lapagi in Ningon Chela goes out, Vele Machaha, say Nami Sengian, Valeli, Sagozi, I gem swat, Rafale, San, him swati, and never foot sago and din to Lencha Lumacha. Overcoma seven, doubtful at second, he swell it on Lela Macha.
the young ones are positive. But with the problem, they cannot go to the hospital because there is no money. Here in Switzerland, if you don't have medication, you don't have food, 10 years, it's just a long time for you to live. They are coming from school expecting food, but there is no food. I was asking her, what's the way is the, the supply food? that they usually have here, and then she says it's, it has, it's finished. Maybe on the issue of food, it's another problem. Maybe in, in New York, can you mobilize food for the children, please? I'd like to make some comments on what's happening in Swaziland. Swaziland has the highest prevalence rate in the world, 42.6%. That's the highest prevalence rate I have ever encountered in the last five years. The mind fractures at the thought of it. It is my contention that years from now, historians will ask how it was possible that the world allowed AIDS to throttle and eviscerate a continent and watch the tragedy unfold in real time while we toyed with the game of reform. Before we begin uh, the high-level meeting on HIV AIDS, I invite the distinguished delegates to take their seats for a very short informal segment. I invite Mrs. Bush, First Lady of the United States of America, to take the floor. AIDS respects no national boundaries, spares no race or religion, devastates men and women, rich and poor. No country can ignore this crisis. Fighting AIDS is an urgent calling because every life in every land has value and dignity. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Majesty King Mamswati III, Head of State of the Kingdom of Swaziland. It is clear that uh, HIV AIDS is a serious disease, especially when you look at the number of people that are dying of AIDS. For example, in sub-Saharan Africa alone, more than two million people die of AIDS-related sicknesses in 2005. This is like a war. Recently, we dropped the tassels. Internationally, they view it as a sex ban, whereas in Swaziland, it's a prolonged culture where all Swazi maidens would just remain celibate for a certain period of time. It's never been five years before, but the king made it like that because of the HIV AIDS crisis and because just generally, we want to bring back our culture because it makes us who we are.
As people living with HIV and AIDS in Swaziland, we are not recognized. Be it the government, be it the head of state, be it... We are only recognized by the international. As you see, our donors, the Stephen Lewis Foundation in Canada. But we have government, we have a head of state, he says he recognizes HIV and AIDS. Where are we? Does he know us? He doesn't. In Swaziland, we have a lot of uh, Swazi customs and culture that makes a woman to be inferior. She cannot take her decision on her own. So if you want to, to use the condom at home, you cannot say, let's protect ourselves, because he's the one to take the decision on your behalf that I may protect you or not. The king declared in 2001, he said, HIV and AIDS is a disaster. Everybody should take caution of that. You should be, be faithful. If we talk about faithful, we say, stick to your wife or your wives. How many wives from 2001 up to today? Is it being faithful to the others that were there in 2001? It's not. Is that a role model to us? I usually complain and say, the more the king helps my wife, the more the, the king takes wives, it's the more the HIV and AIDS is spread. Because they look at him and say, oh, there's no HIV. Why the king continues? taking more wise, we can also continue. The day the king came was the same day I started school. I would have liked him to come alone, just him as my parent with his bodyguards. He was really apologetic about it. I was happy about the speech he made when he was at the restaurant to the teachers because everyone was worried by the fact that he didn't really like the school, he didn't want me to be there. I am sure we are going to be having a lot of confidence that uh, uh, my child is kind of who's going to be studying here. She will be well looked after. When they left, <laughs> It was really, oh my gosh. And the fact that I had asked him to come alone, but he didn't. I was just upset by the whole thing. When he left, he was like, are you gonna come outside? I was like, yeah, of course. And then when we was outside, he called me to the car. And I was crying. Deep down inside, I can't believe you guys are actually gonna leave me here. accept it. The world will know that we were not happy. They were just making a, a window dresser to deceive the world that they are doing something about it, and yet they are not. Send the one to Nangu Lugu, 
my maiden speech is like we would say his office has got an open door policy. Was surprised to find a closed gate. Um, nevertheless, the we would say see in a maband la lang a baho liberty seventeen at in Sangan, a letter penish or a pave. A Caesar to say back on a way to Lapa, we would see. Lomutan <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Uh, and what's your show? Where's your snakes? I have them. I'm gonna come back. How old are you? Me? Yeah. In my spirit, uh, how old are you? You have quite a nice nothing. Hey, how old are you? I'm, I'm 18. Hey, is that for free? Thank you. Oh my god. What in the world is going on? Is, are you crazy? Yeah. Ow! Oh, shit, I did, yeah, yeah. Hold the chair. Keep your head up one more time. Here we go. Hoover, Hoover! Hoover! Jesus saves, be forgiven. Don't curse or sin sexually. I agree. All right. Hi. How you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Let me hold that for you. Okay. So other people can see. You gonna be here for a while? Sir? How long are you gonna be in town? Don't take 
the mark of the beast. Hell is real. Obey Jesus, not Satan. I like your job. You like my job? <laughs> it's genuine and it's important. Oh, it is. Not like everybody who's telling jokes and stepping on glass and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, have a nice day. Yeah, you see what you mean? Hashu. I'm sorry? Hashu. Hashu. And Josh, nice to meet you. Josh. Yes, call. Nice to meet you as well. How's real? You're not in school, you're not learning anything new or training. I am in school. Did you go someplace? <laughs> yeah. Oh, where'd you go? Here. Oh, you came here? <laughs> yeah. You got from here? No. Oh, where are you from? Africa. See, you know, it says something about school travel. Man. It said you had money too, though. <laughs> oh, your parents are rich? No. Where'd you get the money? It said money. It didn't look like you worked for it. It didn't. Do you hear that? <laughs> but look at this. It said you felt stuck and trapped. And then it showed the trip, which delivered you, released you. And then you've got strife at home. That's what? Strife or strife. struggling. During September, we have the re dance that we have right now, led by me ever since I was seven. The re dance, it's not for the king, actually. It's a culture that's been there for every single king, and they brought it up because they wanted to promote the pride of virginity and of being youthful for girls. And the king, if he does happen to choose a wife, he just does choose one. And a lot of people just interpret the king's taking wives as if he is being authoritative and taking them by force, but it's not like that because, quite frankly, a lot of the girls want to be there anyways. People think what they hear from the media is what Swaziland is all about. And, but those people, like at my school, they're not like that because they get to hear my side of the story, the true side because we, be, we know better. And they'll be like telling me every day that, oh, did you see the newspaper today? Oh, apparently your dad has a new wife. Oh, apparently your dad bought a jet. And just all sorts of false rumors. The king allegedly abducted a wife. That wasn't true. <laughs> she loved it. I think Swaziland is the last absolute monarchy in Africa, so of course people are going to want to bring us down and make sure that we just leveled with all the other countries. But that's not going to happen because we identify ourselves with the culture. Without the king, we have no culture.